Hey friends, thanks for joining us for Midweek Encouragement, once again here with the First Church of God. As I was thinking and as I was preparing for today, I, I have an appreciation for a GPS, a global positioning system. I appreciate those things because they help me find things that I've never been to, find locations of places that I've never been to. I just have to put in the address and it will take me to this place. I remember one time my family and I, we were traveling and uh, we were looking for a Walmart. So we programmed Walmart into the GPS. And as we were going down the road, it said, turn here, turn there. And we keep following the path that it's taking us on and we're going this seems wonky it doesn't seem like the place that we're supposed to be going when we finally arrived we did arrive at a walmart but it was the walmart distribution center not a walmart store and we still laugh about it it took us where we were looking for but it wasn't really where we were looking for Oftentimes, because I've traveled to places uh, when i'm going my gps says this is the way you need to go but I know where I want to go, and I may know a different route to get there. So the entire time, my GPS is saying, recalculating, recalculating. And I just have to ignore it and let it catch up to be going where I want to go. Um, one time, we were on a trip, and we were in downtown Dallas. We were going to walk around downtown Dallas. So I took the GPS out of the car. I put it on, uh, uh, on pedestrian mode. And it was trying to find where we were to lead us around. It didn't do that great of a job. After we had been downtown for several hours and it was time to go home, we put the, we got back into the car, punched the button to take us back to the motel we were staying in. And about every 20 feet, 30 feet, the GPS was saying, recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. And I had to think about it. It dawned on me, someone, hmm, someone forgot to take it off of pedestrian and put it into car mode can you just imagine getting in and programming the gps and it's saying you can't get there from here when it comes to uh relationships with others as believers in jesus christ our gps the holy spirit has a desire to remind us to recalculate where we are going sometimes we need to restore someone to a correct relationship with us or maybe with others, or maybe even with God. There are times we need to look at ourselves and see our own and, and, and hear uh, what the Holy Spirit has to, uh, to say to us. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us the, the issues that are going on within us. And we need to be careful that we're not operating out of our own hurt, but that we're operating in the Spirit of God. The enemy loves it when we operate in the flesh and when we start doing things that are not God's ways. There is this huge temptation to burn relationship bridges. We probably want to avoid the toxic Tammies of our life or the Debbie Downers of our lives. And God's word calls us to do something different. God's word calls us to pray for them. Yeah, arguing with them is not wise. Uh, to respond to them is to step aside and, to, uh, and, and allow the enemy to win. But what we need to do as we pray for them is what we're doing is we're allowing God to step in and God to do what God does best. Recently in my quiet time, uh, I came across the passage of scripture and it really spoke to me. It's from Romans chapter 12, verse 21. And it says, do not overcome evil by evil, but overcome evil with good. And so we understand this a little bit more. Before Paul wrote that verse, he said, starting at verse 17, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful that you do what is right in the eyes of everyone. For it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if, you're hung, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Really, Paul? Do you know who you're dealing with? Do you know who I have to deal with? Our, our human desire makes us uh, want to get even with those that hurt us or hurt one of our family members, those people that we love. But Paul is saying, don't repay evil with more evil. And as unnatural as this feels, Paul was saying to do, uh, Paul was on to something. He wasn't saying people shouldn't be held accountable for their actions. I mean, they, they need to be held accountable, but you're not the judge. 
He's saying it's not our job to seek revenge. It's not our job to get back at other people. Because when we do, we stoop to their level. If you've ever been spelunking, spelunking is going and exploring caves. It's a lot of fun. But as I get older, it's a lot as easy to do as it used to be. I don't like to have to stoop down to get through some of those narrow passages. I don't want to stoop any more than I have to. When we stoop to those who hurt us to their level, we are actually cooperating with evil. Evil, and, and when we do this, there is more pain, there is more sin, there is more anger to the point that we are overcome with evil. The Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold. Anger always allows him to get a foothold. And if he grabs for the foot, he will not be satisfied until he has you in a chokehold. As Jesus says in John 10, he says, the thief comes to steal kill and destroy. I've come that you may have life. So his goal is to, the enemy's goal is to destroy you. Christ's goal is for you to have life. And we're not going to get this right every time. But if we are mindful and if we are aware of this trap that the enemy has set for us, we're going to be less likely to be caught in the trap. Our greatest example for this is Jesus himself. He blessed everyone. While he was on the cross, remember what he said while he was on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He loved everyone. He even loved those people that were crucifying him. I think he loved them because he was helping. He, he, they were helping him fulfill the law. He was fulfilling the covenant of the Old Testament. His desire was to see their hearts changed from evil to good. Let's rise above retaliation and not cooperate with evil. And we can do this by choosing good. Whose good do we put this into practice for? Not those who do evil, but for our own good. And I know it seems selfish, but God sees beyond the moment. And he sees your health. He sees your future. And we need to forgive so that we can be forgiven. Please keep in mind, forgiveness is given. Trust is earned. Did you hear that? Forgiveness is given, trust is earned. You might want to write that down. Forgiveness is given, trust is earned. To overcome evil with good can happen by praying for those who hurt you. Forgiveness is given, trust is earned. Yes, it takes time. It takes a long time. And to the level we're willing to forgive others, God will forgive us. It's impossible to hate somebody that you're praying for. I've heard it said years ago that may those who love us, love us. And may those who hate us, may God turn their hearts. And if he doesn't turn their hearts, may he turn their ankles. So we'll recognize them by their limp. In my years as a pastor and an illusionist, I've learned that uh, when I'm speaking and I'm holding a microphone, I don't hand the microphone over to somebody else. If I have a question for them, I just put it in front of their face and allow them to speak into the microphone. If they grab hold of the microphone, I've lost control and they steal the show or they mess up the show or they cause a problem. I have to hold the microphone. So my question to you right now is, who are you allowing to hold the microphone in your life? Who are you allowing to speak into your life? Who is in control? Overcoming evil with good is not being a doormat. It is doing what is right. It is taking the high road where there isn't much traffic. God's ways are higher than our ways. You are going to feel that they don't deserve it. They don't deserve you praying for them. They don't deserve your kindness or even the time of day in your own eyes. But it isn't about them. It is about you and your relationship with Jesus Christ. Overcoming evil with good is you and I surrendering our desire to God and asking, how can, do you want this to be done? Allowing God to have control and for allowing God to re, uh, release us from this, this trap that we're in, releasing it to him. Let me illustrate it this way. If I, if I go on a trip on an airplane, I am releasing my control to the destination, I'm releasing that control to the pilot. I do this because that pilot has the training and has the experience. He doesn't need any advice. All I can do is give him my trust. Think about it. If I can trust another person with my life and the lives of everybody else on this airplane, 
Uh, why do I have so much trouble trusting God with my everyday things? It is about releasing the control from my hands and saying, your way is so much higher than my way, Father God, because you see beyond the moment and you see where you desire me to be, not where I am. I think about the time when God answered a 430-year-old prayer of the Israelites to be released from their bondage that they were suffering in in Egypt. And he saw where uh, they could, uh, he saw where they were, he saw what they needed, and he saw a better place for them to be. The problem was, he moved their physical bodies but it didn't move their hearts. Their hearts were still in Egypt. They always wanted to go back to what was familiar. It isn't easy to let go of the familiar, but God is doing a new thing. And the only way to take hold of the new thing is to let go of the old thing. Let me pray for you today. Father God, I ask that you forgive us for holding on to evil. You desire for us to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. You are good. For those who have hurt us, will you continue to uh, help us? I ask you to forgive them, for they know not what they do. I ask that you send a messenger into their life so that they will be drawn to you. And they will see you as the way, the truth, and the life. Protect us, Father, from evil. Show us your presence as we walk with you. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. May it be so. May God continue to bless you. Thanks for watching today. And we look for you, for you to be with us in this place. Overcome evil with good and pray for those that drive you nuts. Even if somebody from way in the past, keep praying for them because God has something better in store for you. Bye-bye.